God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Odell McFarlane III, and I am the senior pastor at God's Harbor for All Souls, and it brings me great pleasure, amen, to come to you again on another Sunday to share the Word of God. And listen, we are excited about what God is doing in our ministry. We're excited about those who God has chosen uh, to partner with us, and so we're continuously grateful uh, for those, you know, Pastor Mike, Pastor Dorothy, and all of you who have continuously to come and support us, amen, while we are, amen, recovering. We're so thankful for how God has began to heal our body, and amen, and before you know it, we'll be back with you, amen, on Sunday mornings. But we thank God for the opportunity to share his word, amen, with you, and we have been sharing God's word in regards to his grace and people of God, I come to let you know that the reason why God has laid it upon our hearts to continue to share this dynamic word of grace is because this is the age and the time I truly believe that God is on his way back. And I know we say that, but I truly believe that God is using this time, amen, and his people during this time to be a blessing in the midst of famine, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of destruction, as we see across the news, amen, fires, wildfires, amen, recession, amen, job loss, amen, and all of the things that the enemy is trying to do to detour us and to detour our attraction away from him, amen, God says not so, but he has provided a generation, a Benjamin generation, to be the mouthpiece of God's grace. And people of God, I'm here to let you know, amen, that we are the salt of the earth. And the Bible says that if the salt loses its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Amen. And so I am here, amen, as a voice, a mouthpiece of God, amen, even in the midst of what is being transpired, even in the events that we are in today. I am here to let you know that God's blessings, His favor is amongst His people. Amen. And I don't know about you, amen, but God's five is on us, amen, and we're going to continue Amen. To expound on that word because it is so important that you understand, amen, that the Old Testament is a symbol of what God uses in the new. Amen. And I'm here to share a few things about, amen, the life of Benjamin and how Benjamin, the brother of Joseph, and how it is so critical that we see the comparisons, amen, of what God did yesteryear and what he is doing now. And the one thing that I wanted to share with you that is so important is, is that it is so important for us not to live in the law, but to move where God is moving in grace. Amen. And I know people are saying, why are you continuously ministering grace? Why are you continuously talking about this subject? It is because, amen, we have been beat over the head so frequently in times past as it relates to the law. And what we needed to do, amen, to gain God's love, amen, how we needed to impress upon ourselves our actions, whether it would be our continuous, amen, efforts in church or our continuous tithing or, amen, our continuous prayer life. And all of those things are fine and are necessary for your spiritual growth, amen, but it will not stop God's blessings. If you, amen, for some reason weren't able to attend a service or to attend a prayer, amen, that doesn't negate God. God's love for us. And for so long, we have been taught, amen, with religious edict that what we did or what we wore or what we said, amen, was what was needed in order for God to love us. Amen. And so when we didn't do that, when we didn't follow the law, amen, when we didn't follow the precepts, amen, we were, amen, condemned to thinking that Jesus didn't love us. Amen. But I am here to let you know, amen, that through the word of God, as we begin to share the word of God, that his love is still for you, that God's hand and his favor is upon your life. And so we're going to get into the word of God and we're going to show you, amen, that God is still in the miraculous business. He is still in the blessings business. 
and God's blessings and favor is on the generation of Benjamin. And I don't know about you, but I am in a man, the generation of Benjamin. I am here to let you know that God has no respect of person. And just like I make my declaration and my confession that God's love is for me and that his favor is upon me and that wherever my feet tread, I shall prosper. That blessing belongs to you as well. And so I am, amen, a disciple of grace. I am a disciple and sharing God's word, amen, so that you can share God's word as well, amen. And it's not a sloppy grace or cheap grace that allows us to do whatever we want, amen. I'm here to let you know that when you fall in love with God, just like you fall in love with your spouse or your significant other, amen, it doesn't mean that you're going to go cheat on them, amen. It means that you love them even the more and that you want, amen. Amen. To do whatever you can do. Amen. To see that they are being pleased. And that is no different in grace. Amen. When you see how much God loves you and how much his favor, amen, is upon you and how he has blessed you in the seasons of recession, amen, in the seasons of chaos, you will begin to worship him like you've never worshiped him before. Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself, but it is true. When you understand how much God loves you, when you understand how much his favor is upon you, amen, it drives you to worship. It drives you to falling on your face and to giving God thanks. Amen. Because you know that it is nothing that you could have done. Amen. To grant his grace and his mercy upon your life. Amen. And I'm here to let you know, and I'm going to show you in God's word, amen, that you, amen, are the funnel of success for those who are around you. Amen. And God's favor that is upon your life, amen, it can be demonstrated upon those who are in your family, those who are in your community. Amen. And you, amen, people of God, you, I'm pointing to you. You are the reason, amen, that those around you, amen, will be captivated by God's grace. They will see God's favor on your life. They will see what God has done for you. And they will say, what must I do to be saved? How can I gain, amen, this eternal life, this great grace, amen, and favor that God has? And people of God, as we begin to study the word, we see that Joseph, amen, and Benjamin were two brothers that came from the same mother. Amen. They came from Rachel. Amen. And the word Rachel means you or amen, lamb. Amen. And it demonstrates, amen, the sacrifice or the lamb, Jesus, who was crucified and who was slain. Amen. And that word, Rachel, symbolizes God's grace. And we see, amen, that Rachel was loved by Jacob. Amen. And we see that Rachel, she had a counterpart and it was Leah. Amen. And that word Leah in the Greek means weary. Amen. And it shows you that when you are under the law, it is weariness. When you're trying with your own efforts to demonstrate to God how much you love him, when you try in your own strength, Amen. To wear things and to look a certain way and to act a certain way and to do certain things to gain God's favor. God says, look, it's not about what you do, but it's about what my son has done. And I'm here to let you know, people of God. Amen. That we, amen, we may have the same father, but many of us don't have the same mother. Many of us, amen, who have walked in beginning to walk in grace, we are walking under our mother, Rachel, and those who are under the law, who are weary, who are condemning us because we are free. Amen. Because we are no longer bondsmen. Amen. They want to forsake us. Amen. Just like Joseph's brothers, who came from Leah, amen, they want to condemn us and they want to pit us, amen, but I'm here to let you know that God says not so. We have been established in his grace and in his favor, amen, and there is nothing the devil can do about it. Is that all right? I want to share with you in God's word, and we're going to share in the Amplified Version, 2 Corinthians 3, 
7 through 11. Amen. And we're going to read this out of the Amplified Version. It says, Now if the ministry of death engraved in letters on stones, the covenant of the law, which led to death because of sin, came with such glory and splendor that the Israelites were not able to look steadily at the face of Moses because of his glory, a brilliance that was fading, how will the ministry of the Spirit, the new covenant which allows us to be Spirit-filled, fail to be even more glorious and splendid? For if the ministry that brings condemnation, the old covenant, the law, has glory, how much more does glory overflow in the ministry that brings righteousness? The new covenant, which declares believers free of guilt and sets them apart for God's special purpose. Verse 10, indeed, what had glory, the law, in this case, no longer has glory because of the glory that surpasses it, the gospel. Verse 11, the last verse. For if that law which fadeth away, fades away, came with glory, how much more must that gospel which remains and is permanent abide in glory and splendor? Let me tell you, people of God, this word specifies, amen, that God has moved away, amen, from the law. Because it was impossible, and it still is impossible, for man to be able to obtain and to live by the law. Because if we were still under the law, God's requirement would be that every aspect of the law would have to be honored. Amen. And it was impossible for man to be able to live under the law and please God. He had to have, he had to have continuous sacrifices in order for him to be set free from not doing what the law called for. And people of God, I'm here to let you know that God is saying, move away from that thing, amen, which you cannot abide by, and move into grace, amen, which God has set us free, amen, because grace is where the blessings are. Let me say that again. Grace is where the blessings are his favor, his love, his caring, his healing, his prosperity, his virtue, his power. It is in grace. Hallelujah. And when you begin to understand that and walk in that, and then those who are around you will begin to operate in that same blessing. And let me tell you, people of God. When Joseph saw Benjamin, his heart leaped, amen, with such fervor, amen, and compassion and such love. And that's because, amen, God loves grace. Hallelujah. He loves those that are birthed from grace. He loved those who have found that it is not in your doing, but it is in your believing. It is in your believing in Jesus that have made you free from the law of sin and death and have gained you your wings in heaven, amen, on the earth and soon to be in heaven because of his grace. Hallelujah. And people of God, I'm here to let you know that there's no devil in hell that can stir you away from what God is about to do in your life. And I prophetically profess, I declare upon your life that great blessings are about to fall upon you. And even as there are things going on, amen, in the economy, amen, and in the earth, amen, it shall not come nigh thy dwell. Why? Because God's hand is on your life. His favor is on your life. And people of God, I'm here to let you know, just like Joseph, his journey Amen. He came from the pit to the palace. And you may not be where God wants you to be right now, but I'm here to let you know that grace will see you through. And at the very end of your journey, you will find yourself, amen, where God wants you to be. Amen. And you may not think you're in that place, but if you're in the pit where you see, amen, things that are not working for you, I'm saying don't give up on grace. Amen. We have such impatience in our lives. We think that we should be someplace. Amen. And God's saying, hold on. 
stay patient and allow my favor to move you to the palace. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you're not going to be in the pit for very long. God is about to lift you up. He's about to heal your body. He's about to renew your mind. He's about to captivate your spirit because those who are in the generation of Benjamin will never be denied God's favor. We will never be denied the blessings and the miracle that is due you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get more into the word of God. Let's go to Genesis 45. Hallelujah. 5. And I'm going to read this out of the King James Version. And then we're going to go to verse 7 and 8. It says, verse 5, Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sowed me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Verse 7. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not that you that sent me hither, but God, and he hath made me a father of Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout the land of Egypt. Let me tell you, he was saying, don't be upset. Hallelujah. Because I was in the pit. Amen. And God is saying that you are the reason and you will be the reason for so many people who are connected to you to be blessed. Amen. I hope you understand that just like Joseph, amen, was the center of attraction where even when there was famine, God used Joseph to bless his brothers and to bless his father. And I'm saying to you today that God is going to use you, amen, to be a blessing to others, amen. And so don't give up on those who are around you. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on those, amen, who are connected to you because God is going to use you to be a blessing, hallelujah. Don't stop praying. Don't stop fasting. Don't stop believing, amen, for those who are connected to you. Because I'm here to let you know that they will see the hand of God on your life. They will see God's blessings on your life. And they will say, what must I do to be saved? What must I do, amen, to reap the blessings that are upon your life? And that will be your opportunity to minister and to let them know if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus who died and was raised again, amen, you shall be born again. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, people of God, when you begin to walk in grace, your behavior will automatically change. Your view on things, amen, and what you used to do will begin to shed off of you. Amen. Your old man will begin to die out. And the Bible says that you will be a new creature and old things shall pass away. And it is because you have your father, amen, and you have Jesus. And God honors Jesus, amen, just as he honored Joseph. Let me tell you, Jesus is our heavenly Joseph. Amen. Just like Joseph was rejected, Jesus was rejected. Just like Jesus was sent in between two prisoners, amen, Joseph was in prisoner, in prison with prisoners, amen. And there is so many similarities between Joseph and Jesus. And I'm here to let you know that Jesus is our Joseph. He is the one that will deliver us. Amen. And when you begin to understand that, amen, God's blessings and his favor is because of Jesus. Come on, let me say that again. Every blessing over your life, amen, every piece of prosperity, every piece of healing that God has brought, every mind that is being regulated is not because of anything that we do. It is because of Jesus. Hallelujah. And people of God, I'm excited today because I understand that if it had not been for the Lord who is on our side, where would we be? Come on, let's go to John 1. Hallelujah. Verse 17. John 1, 17, King James. It says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth 
came by Jesus Christ. He says, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You see, it is Jesus who has brought grace. In essence, grace is Jesus. I want you to hear me today. Grace is Jesus. And so when you deny grace, you deny his son. When you deny grace, you deny all of the bountiful blessings that comes from Jesus. And what it means is, is that he didn't come to condemn the world. He came to bless us. Amen. He came to qualify us. He came to validate us. Amen. All of you who believe upon him. Amen. The Bible says you shall be saved, not just saved from your sins or saved from hell, but you shall be saved from disease. You shall be saved from uh, poverty. You shall be saved amen, from depression. You shall be saved from every damnable thing that the enemy wants to bring upon your life. And people of God, I'm here to let you know that despair comes from the enemy. He says, he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. He says, but I have come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Oh, we're preaching today. Amen. Because I'm excited to let you know that despite what is around us, God is here to cause miracles upon your life. God is here because you have walked out of the law and you have walked into his grace. And people of God, let me tell you today that you need to be very sensitive and hear, amen, what it is that God wants you to be, what it is that he wants you to say, who he wants you to be around, amen, because this grace, amen, is about to overpour and overtake. And God wants you, amen, to be sympathetic to those who are around you. He wants you to begin to pray for those who are suffering. He wants you to begin, amen, to speak life over those who may not have your knowledge or your wisdom. Amen. He wants you to speak peace to those who may be distraught, who may be struggling in relationships, who may be sick in their body, who may not have the finances that they're looking for. I am here to tell you that your words of grace, amen, and that your words, amen, will send comfort or will bring comfort to those who are struggling in their life. Hallelujah. And that's because you are the seed of Benjamin. Come on, we're going to close with this. Let's go to John 6, 37. We're going to close with John 6, 37. Hallelujah. King James Version. It says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I love this. Let me tell you, people of God, if you truly have made it up in your mind and believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that he is Lord, he says, I will not cast you out. Hallelujah. I love that. That should be your testimony. Hey Amen. That God is in love with you, that he wants you around him. Amen. He wants you sitting next to him. Amen. In the heavenlies. And he says, I will never cast you out. Now you can walk away, but God will never walk away from you. He will never separate. He says, what can separate? Amen. My love for you shall death shall perils of anger and destruction. Amen. What shall separate us from the love of God? There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Why? It's because we are the generation of Benjamin. We are the graced. We are the blessed. We are the highly favored. Amen. And if you believe, amen, like I believe today, amen, you will be able to take hold of those things that are causing you concern that are causing you to stay up at night, that are causing you to stress, that are causing you anxiety. And I'm here to let you know there is no anxiety. Amen. There should be no fear because perfect love casteth out all fear. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we thank you that your hand is upon our life. We thank you that great grace is with us and for us. God, we thank you even right now for us being the generation of Benjamin. We thank you for your great grace that is upon our life. 
We thank you for the favor that you have provided to us. And Father, we ask even right now that you would look upon those who have not found you to be their king of king and their lords of lords. And Father, that you would lead us to those who would need to hear the word and that would need to hear this message of grace. And Father, that you would embolden us to share this word like we've never shared before and that they will see your hand of blessings over our life and that they will say, what must I do to be saved? And Father, this is what we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Listen, we're excited, amen, as you can hear from our voice, what God is doing, what God is doing in our ministry and what God is doing in others' ministries and what God is doing in the kingdom. Amen. And I will beg you and plead with you, continue to get into the word of God. Continue to study the word of God. Continue to pray, amen, and seek his face, amen, because when you get the revelation of grace, amen, it will cause you to fall on your face and to worship. Hallelujah. It will cause you, amen, to seek the Father and to thank him for his son Jesus. Hallelujah. When you go to him, you will say, God, I thank you for your son Jesus. For I could not have done any of this my business, my family, my relationships, amen, the things that you've done for my children, amen, the, their wayward rebellion, Father, for how you've corrected my finances and how you've restored my home, it is because of Jesus. And when you understand that, you will want to give to the kingdom because you will want to give God something back for what he has done for you. You see, when Abraham won the war, against the five kings, he went back to Melchizedek and he said, let no man say that they made Abram rich. And he tied, he gave because of what God did for him. And I'm here to let you know what God will do for you. Amen. It should render worship. Amen. The business that you have. Amen. That should have been bankrupt or folded. Amen. The job that you were promoted for. Amen. When others don't have. Amen. The house, the roof that God gave you. Amen. It is all because of Jesus. Nothing that you have done deserve it. But if it had not been for the Lord who is on your side, where will, where would you be? Listen, I'm excited. Amen. And I want you to give as given unto the Lord as you see ways to give. Amen. And continue to support our ministry. Amen. I'll be back stronger than ever. Amen. Two good hips working. Amen. All healed. Amen. And ready to shout the victory. Until then, continue to support the ministry. Continue, amen, to support, amen, our videos and listen to the word of God. Let it get into your mind. Let it get into your spirit. Amen. So that you may be elevated. Amen. And so that you, amen, may share the word with someone else so that they may understand the grace of God and the love that he has for them, just like he has for you. Listen, we love you. We know that God is love, but never forget that Jesus is Lord. <laughs>